he is a dad. He is a UConn grad, and he is vice president of programming and acquisitions, ESPN Pro Basketball and Combat Sports. He is Matt Kenny. Let's not forget his time as a student manager on the basketball team for UConn. All of these things are fair game to talk about here as you learn about his life, his journey on the On to Something podcast. I'm Brian Fenley. And Matt, I'm excited to, to have you on. I know I've had a lot of your colleagues on, so really looking forward to this deep conversation. Uh, Brian, appreciate it. Uh, very much looking forward to it. Obviously humbled by the invitation. So how have your kids gotten so good at sports? There's incredible athletes across the board here that I'm noticing. Well, they, they certainly didn't inherit that gene from their dad. <laughs> Uh, that's for sure. Uh, my, my wife, Amanda, and I, we have, we have four kids. Uh, they're, they're, they're incredible. We have three girls and a boy. Uh, the girls are Cameron, 16, Madeline, 14, Allison, 12, and our little guy, AK, he's 10. And they really range the gamut of playing, whether it's softball, volleyball, in the case of our little guy, baseball. Um, but athletics, it's just awesome to see athletics being a big part of their lives. Um, it was a big part of, of my life growing up. My wife played sports as well. And so I think there's, there's an incredible amount of healthy benefits, the ability to work as a team, a lot of life lessons you, you learn, um, how to deal with adversity. Um, as you know, when you play sports, things don't always go your way out there. And so, you know, the fact that they're all active is, uh, is something we're really proud of. If I found you in the bleachers of one of your daughter's softball games, what kind of sports dad are you? when being there for one of your kids um it, it's a great question you know I, I i also coach as well so i you know I'm, I'm glad i'm glad i'm not asked what kind of coach i am out there <laughs> I, you know, I, I love love volunteering out there uh when i can um i remember my parents being at my games growing up and i i knew at a really early age i wasn't playing pro ball I think that was a pretty, that was a pretty quick uh, self-discovery for me, but it didn't matter whether I was playing uh, varsity football and we were getting skunked 61, nothing on Saturdays, which, which happened uh, or, or playing baseball or, or whatever the case might be. I always remembered seeing my parents there and, and in much the same way, I, I hope when, when my kids look back on, on their youth sports experience that, that they remember me being there and just being present. And so when I'm a dad in the stands, I, I just sit there and I, I beam with pride, you know, and, and you're probably, you know, certainly in my case, more nervous than my kids are uh, <laughs> in a lot of ways, because you want to see them do well. And I imagine parents who have kids that play youth sports likely can relate to that. Um, and, and at the same time, it's awesome when you, when you see them battle through and grind and, and ultimately enjoy success. And most importantly, build some fresh, build friendships along the way and learn what it means to, to operate in a team, uh, team dynamic. When your parents were there present as you growing up playing a sport, what did that mean to you to have them there? How are you feeling when you noticed that they were there and how much they cared about being there for you? I, it, it meant the world, right? I mean, <clears throat> I think they realized pretty quickly too, I wasn't going to play pro. So their investment in me was not one where they would be able to celebrate my, my long-term <laughs> professional uh, athletic exploits. Um, but, but just their, their presence, their support, um, you know, it, it, it was, it was foundational in many ways because it was it, clearly their, their being there was, was, the, was a sign of love. And, and, um, you know, it's just something I'll never forget. How do you show your kids that sign of love? Obviously you do it in being there for them at these sporting events, but how do they play off of that? And how do they show you how much they appreciate all that you do for them? Uh, I, I think it depends on the day and depends on the game, but you know, it's, uh, I, I, I think more than anything, Brian, it's, it's just encouraging them, uh, and really we focus on two things uh, in a lot of ways, it's attitude and effort, right? Um, and a lot of those things translate to whatever it is that you're doing, whether it's, you know, as they continue to grow uh, in, in, in school and then ultimately college and, and beyond. But by focusing on, on attitude and effort, those are things you can control. And, and so 
you know, the wins and losses are going to be what they are. They're going to come and go and you're going to have some games that are better and some games that, you know, perhaps not so much. Some games where you play a lot, maybe some games where you don't play quite so much. Um, but it's really trying to find those life lessons in there um, and using that as a forum to to hopefully create those building blocks so that as the as the kids get older, they're able to make the best decisions as they can when they ultimately leave the nest down the road. Which seems to happen faster than anybody would have thought as time flies. Yeah. Matt Kenny is with me with ESPN. I'm Brian Fenley. Attitude and effort and how that helps you deal with the wins and losses of your journey career-wise and how that's helped you. How would you sort of put that into words? So when I, you mentioned at the top, um, my time at UConn. And so when I was at UConn, uh, and I love sharing this story, I was a student manager for Jim Calhoun, Hall of Fame basketball coach, Jim Calhoun, and the men's basketball team. I was there during the Daniel Marshall, Ray Allen, Rip Hamilton years. It was just an incredible time to be in stores, Connecticut. Um, I thought I knew what it meant to work hard when I stepped foot on that UConn campus. And then I spent an afternoon at a Jim Calhoun practice and I, and I realized pretty quickly, I, I didn't know anything. And it was over those four years working with coach where I, I really saw what it would take if you truly want to be great. And remember where UConn was at the time program on the rise, um, trying to, trying to kind of get into the final four. They'd never been to the final four during my time there. They ultimately made it in 99 and ultimately won, um, which was incredible. But just to see Coach's incredible drive, his determination, and just sheer will to outwork everybody, um, those were things that I, I I took away in spades and just realized that if I want to build any type of meaningful career, that's got to be table stakes. And so along the way, I, I certainly don't have uh, the the colorful vocabulary that Coach Calhoun may have when <laughs> you know, he was engaging uh, with with the officials uh, during during the games. But that dogged determination is something that I took with me and and carried forward with me, uh, you know, every step along the way. And and then and then certainly in a corporate setting. You know, I, I do, I love to embrace uh, a philosophy of realistic optimism. And, and I think people like to, uh, I, I truly believe that, that, that we all want a better tomorrow, whether it's for ourselves, our loved ones, um, uh, whatever the circumstances might be. And so I think it's important to have that dogged determination to just, you know, work your, ta- work your tail off and then also do so in a way that helps people understand the bigger picture the, the hope for a better tomorrow, understanding that while goals can be lofty, yes, you can go get them. And it's okay if you, if you kind of stub your toe along the way because you learn from it, grow, move on and get better. Um, I, I think, you know, all of those things are so important and, you know, in a, in a lot of ways, how I hope I show up every day. That faith in yourself that you're talking about and that you carried from your time with Coach Calhoun into a work setting. And you mentioned the idea the genesis of your determination is looking for that better tomorrow. How in your life have you wanted that better tomorrow, but maybe it hasn't been in plain sight, but you've had to dig deep and you've had to stay with it. And that faith that you've had to show in yourself when you can't see that tomorrow, you want it. But how have you been able to do that where you might not see it yet, but you know, it's coming. It's just a matter of time. It's it's a great question. Uh, a lot of times when I've had those moments of self-reflection like that, it's one thing to look inward and view whatever that might be through my own personal circumstance. And then the times that I did that, though, I've realized it was it was limiting because the more I'm looking inward at me, that's not focus that I'm giving to my team. And so I realized pretty quickly that all of that individual success, great. That stuff will take care of itself. And I really believe that. If as a leader, I'm doing everything I can uh, to put my team and my folks in the best position possible. And so it's, it's funny because that inward reflection actually resulted in more outward 
uh, support, commitment, presence. And that's, that's really where, you know, I feel like when things are clicking and you hear when, when, when you're in the zone or when you're flowing, like it's that, that to me is when, when we are operating as a team, when the team is, is thriving and, and uh, being put in positions to be successful, that, that to me gives that hope and that understanding and that belief that regardless of whatever that might mean for me down the road, yeah. they're enjoying success. They're enjoying growth. They're enjoying development, all those things. And, and that matters to me. 1996 UConn basketball enjoyed a lot of success. And I want to go back to that Big East championship game in 1996. UConn versus Georgetown. Where does mm -hmm. your inward reflection, to use one of your terms, take you when you visit that moment again? We were down late in that game. Uh, that, that was an iconic game. For those that might not be uh, as familiar with it, Georgetown and Connecticut were the two best teams in the Big East Conference that year. And Georgetown was led by Allen Iverson and UConn was led by Ray Allen. Um, and you look back now and you realize what a privilege it was to, to be uh, so close to that action um, with, with those two going at it on that stage. Um, UConn, we were down late in that game, and, and I remember after the four-minute timeout, it really felt like Georgetown was pulling away. And our guys just kept grinding. We, we stuck with it. Ray hit uh, a classic scissor kick shot, and, and I was sitting at the end of the UConn bench, and I'll never forget Ray coming across the top of the, top of the key, going toward the right elbow, and Rudy Johnson was in the short corner. And Ray looked at Ray jumped, looked his way and realized that Rudy was covered. And then that's when Ray turned and fired up the shot and, and we got the lucky bounce and away we away we go. Ironically, Georgetown comes down and they uh, Iverson misses a jumper. Jerome Williams misses a putback and, you know, we we celebrate the win. But it was in that moment that I realized like you're never out of it. And there were there were a number of games and, you know, whether it was in playing youth sports or even earlier in my career at UConn. It was that moment, though, when the stakes were the highest that, you know, like you're never out of it and you just got to keep grinding. And that's exactly what the team did. And so it, it was such a privilege to be uh, uh, to be part of that that experience. Um, one funny story from that night. Um, I somehow managed to to be holding the Big East Championship trophy. Uh, on on the MSG floor um, after that event, and and it's chaos. Everyone's running around. It's crazy, and somehow I I wound up with the trophy. <laughs> and and Coach Howie Dickenman uh, turned and looked at me, and in only the colorful way that Howie Dickenman could relay us could could uh, tell me something. He said, "Don't bleep and drop that." <laughs> and, uh, I didn't. Thankfully, I, I got it to someplace safe, and um, you know, I'm sure it's in a trophy case somewhere in stores. It must have felt like you were within a trophy case when you're, let's say, you're at a shooting practice with Ray Allen and you're retrieving his shots and rebounds from practice away from the high stakes basketball. Your interactions with Ray Allen then just getting shots up and watching him do his work. What did you observe from him? Hey, he, first of all, rebounding for Ray Allen was pretty easy. I, I just had to stand <laughs> under. Uh, I, I, didn't, I, I wasn't, I wasn't uh, taking too many steps those days. You know, you just, you know, position yourself underneath the, underneath the hoop and you'll be all right. Uh, I, I mean, He's a world-class athlete. I mean, an iconic NBA player. And his his on the court accolades they speak for themselves. Um, the thing about Ray, I and I sh I've shared this for for years, is he is for as good as he is a, a player, he's a better person, and and that's incredible. Um, and so uh, I, I really appreciate that that time, and and I'm I'm. You know, and Rip Hamilton as well. And Rip, Rip is in, incredible, and I, uh, I'll never forget hosting Rip on his freshman visit to UConn. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, thankfully he, he committed, but you know, I was still part of that uh, experience. And and to to just whether it's Ray or Rip or any of the guys that go into the program when when I was there, just to see how hard they worked. Um, and it's not easy. 
and the the countless hours in the gym and just the the determination to help take UConn basketball to an even higher level year after year after year it, it's just it's it's impossible for that to not rub off on you and to leave an indelible mark um, as, as you kind of move on in your career Matt Kenny is with me I'm Brian Finley what is your version today of countless hours in the gym what does that look like for you uh i love it um uh, I, I love the grind um you know i'm fortunate to uh, to to work with an incredible team um and i'm going to give them some love here ashley o'connor dan riccio kurt bell cassidy mitchell and so many others um at, at espn and, and across disney um, we're, we're a large organization and my team in particular, we sit at the intersection of um, this, this insanely fascinating, changing digital landscape. And so we work day in and day out with the NBA and WNBA and UFC and among others. And, 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 and we're also, we work very closely on, uh, driving uh, our linear networks business as well as our growing direct to consumer business. And so that, that is not, as, as I like to say, that stuff doesn't just miracle itself. So the, in the case of the UFC in particular, we have an incredible relationship with the UFC um, for, for several years now. And it's been awesome to, to work day in and day out with them uh, as we've continued to grow our, ESPN plus direct to consumer business. Similarly, this past summer um, with the WNBA, WNBA had the best year in the league's history, hands down. And ESPN was a huge part of that. And, and our team day in and day out and, and uh, uh, colleagues across our organization, it was really beautiful to watch. We would come together every week and come up with new ideas to help grow the W. And as a father of three daughters and a champion for women's sports, it's, it's like, this is great. And you see the ratings week after week after week. And just there was win after win after win. Um, and there were a lot of folks in our organization really proud of that. And so those are a couple of, of examples of just that grind where every day we're coming in. And I think our company does a good job of, of creating a really simple mission of, hey, we want to better serve sports fans uh, tomorrow than we did today. And by operating with, with that type of mindset, um, we come in every day, we work our tails off, have fun along the way, uh, take our work seriously, but not ourselves too seriously. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it's a joy to come in every day. When you have the title of a girl dad, how does that give you an added perspective on this WNBA platform and understanding how important that is to build up? that space it it's hugely important um you know i'm not normally at a loss for words but this is one that it really hits home right because you think about you, you think about possibilities you think about equality you think about equity you think about um you know i'm, I'm 47 um you know uh, the, the world was much different years ago and and just to see where where women's sports is today, the investment in women's sports today, the few, the, the belief, I, I truly believe this, that, you know, there, there is incredible momentum behind women's sports. And uh, I'm, I'm a huge champion and advocate for that. And so it's great to be able to see the, the results that we've been able to put up on the board. And hopefully there are little girls watching those games there are little girls reading articles and watching clips and highlights and 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 are finding a source of inspiration where they could point to an athlete and say i want to be that and so I, I to me it comes down to hope so the commercial success of what we're doing by virtue of espn's relationship with the WNBA is great and I will never forget how, as a kid, I would watch John Starks and I would think, like, I'm firing up jumpers at a schoolyard thinking I was John Starks. <laughs> and, and, and you realize that if, if, if what you're doing in some small way is able to inspire, uh, inspire a heart, um, open a mind, 
um, encourage someone to pick up a basketball or a soccer ball or whatever the case might be, you know, it just, it feels right. The work that we're doing around the W in, in, in my corner of the world, it just, it feels right. And, and also too, in the UFC, the, the, the women's fighters are, are incredible. And, and, uh, you know, it's just proud to, and I know my team feels this as well. It's just, it's incredible to, to be so close and, and to contribute in that regard. You talk about fighters. How are you a fighter? Uh, so it's, it's a good, it's a good question. I, I mean, I think you, you fight for your family, right? I think first and foremost, right. You, you know, when I, when I lace them up every day, I, I realize I'm not doing it just for me, right? There's a whole team that, that is, is counting on, is counting on me and um, my team is counting on me. So I fight for my team. Um, I always, I always tell my team and it's the God's honest truth. I want to do whatever I can. Uh, and, and our HR, our, our, our compensation team might hate this, but I'm, I, this is what I say. <laughs> I, I, I do. I, I want to put as much money in my team's pocket as possible and to help them grow their career in the manner in which they want. None of that has anything to do with things that I'm doing for them, but more just the environment that I'm creating for them to be amazing. And then they go, they go perform and, and away we go. So I fight for my team. I fight for our partners. Um, you know, I mentioned a few of them. And in addition, we have relationships with top rank and PFL and a whole host of others. And you know, I love fighting for them. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think, and I, I mentioned this earlier, I, I do believe, you know, whether it's people, entities, whatever the case might be, every, everyone is pushing for a better tomorrow. You have no idea what people are bringing to Zooms every day. Uh, for as much as things have returned to normal, they're you know, they're still wacky in their own, in their own regard. Um, and so if it's such a great feeling when you know someone wants to be part of your better tomorrow or someone is fighting for your better tomorrow. And so I hope in some small way that, you know, the folks that I interact with and how I show up every day, you know, genuinely feel that. How is your dad a fighter? So, um, my dad, uh, you know, he, he battled cancer. Uh, he, um, uh, he passed away on March 9th, 2020, just days before the world shut down. Uh, he had battled kidney cancer. Uh, he, uh, he, he fought his tail off. Um, and well, be well beyond, uh, and before he, he, uh, he battled cancer. He, I always like to joke. He's a five foot six Irishman from the Bronx. Uh, I think he, by nature, he just gets up every day and he's ready to ready to 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 fight. And I I, I will never forget, um, you know, just how much he he fought for us, how much he did for us, uh, how how hard he fought his cancer battle, like so many out there. Um, and uh miss him every day um but yeah he's he's a fighter and i know uh, you know i know he's here now he's so proud of you we all are we're all so proud of you and your family how do your kids in in, in your life how do they show you how proud they are of you because i know that matt you're about the team it's not individual here and i don't want you to make it seem like it's all about you because as you know you are so team oriented, which is what I admire so much about you and why I wanted to spotlight you. But just to get that little validation from one of your daughters or your son or your wife, just to say, keep it up, dad. What does that look like? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we, we have a, we have a great tight knit group. It's, it's hard for me to point to, you know, to any one little thing, but, but I'm a big believer in these micro moments. Right. And, and they're, if, if you're aware, they're everywhere, right? These little moments that in the course and cadence of a normal day, they're easy to simply overlook. <clears throat> and so whether it's, you know, our youngest daughter, Allie, asking me to, you know, go hit the volleyball with her, you know, out in the yard, like, you know, are you kidding me? Like, that's like, that, that pulls the, the heartstrings. And so, uh, there, there are, they each have their own, uh, unique way of showing it. Um, 
but you know, Brian, I'll tell you, I, I don't take any of that for, for granted at all. And what does it mean as we wrap up this conversation to see those who you work with thrive as well? Well, it's the best, right? I mean, uh, that to me is like, you know, if I were to put myself in Coach Calhoun's chair, right? And and you, and when you see people, and, and here's the thing, like, I, I'm, you can't cheat it, right? Like, when you see somebody or when you see your team put in the effort, not just, not the bare minimum, but like the effort to really you know, you're, you're coaching them up, you're providing feedback and providing the opportunities, the path for them to grow. And when they take advantage of that and they contribute and enjoy success and they feel that success and love coming back to them from other people in the organization, not just from me, but from others, it's like, what's the universe telling you, right? It is so cool to see. Um, and, and I, I, I love it. I mean, it, it is just, it's remarkable. And, and fortunately, I, you know, I mentioned my team earlier, they're, they're all, they're all rock stars and, um, you know, it's, it's great to see them contribute and grow uh, in their own respective way. You're a rock star as well. My final question for you is what would coach Calhoun say about you? And if he had a chance to say something to you now, knowing what you've done, knowing when he knew you at such that young age. What? It's a funny story. Actually, yeah. I, had, I had the chance. I had the chance to, uh, I've been in touch with coach. Um, um, it was um, a couple of weeks back, talked with him. Um, and I, I, I called him and he was on the third hole somewhere and he had just <laughs> crushed, I think like a six iron is what he told me. And he said, he'd call me back. I mean, it, coach is great. Um, he, he has told me um, how proud he is of me. Um, he, uh, how he, he knew I'd be successful. Although you know, I, I, I jokingly would say, I don't, I don't know if someone, you know, someone should give him truth serum about, you know, uh, <laughs> truth serum back then, if he'd say the same, but, but in, in any event, I, I, uh, I, I've always used the opportunity with him because I think a lot of times, and, and it's not just with, uh, it's not just with coach Calhoun, but with others, I think it's, I think it's really, uh, I think it's great if you proactively let someone know what they mean or have meant to you in your life and your journey. And so I live in Southern California, coach is still in Connecticut. And so I, I think it's important and I don't take for granted what he's done. And I think he should know the impact he's had. And so my advice to my team and others is that if there are folks that have helped you along the way, it's actually okay to give them a little like tip of the cap and let them know, um, because that that stuff goes a long way so. it's beautiful it's beautiful matt to see how his spirit and, and everything he's doing today and how you've kept that relationship and how even all those years later that doggedness you talked about that determination oh, yeah. that hard work the grind and he saw something out of you he saw what you said that better tomorrow out of you maybe at that time early in your life you didn't see that but you had the faith in him to then have the faith in yourself yep. to then pull this off. And he's proud of you. We all are proud of you. And uh, Matt Kenny, this has been so fun. Matt Kenny, Vice President of Programming Acquisitions, ESPN, Pro Basketball and Combat Sports. I'm Brian Fenley. Matt, thanks so much for this heartfelt conversation and, and learning about your life on a deep level. You got it. Thanks, Brian.